Webheads, comic book fans, this is my top 10 most anticipated comics for July 27th, 2022. Fans, I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. It's never too early to start that pull list for next week, and hopefully this list helps you make decisions on what comic books to buy. So guys, let's kick off this week's list with the hot seat, and this first book goes to... Ant-Man, issue one. That's right, guys. We're going to be flashing back to the early days of Hank Pym's career. And, you know, the reason why this book is on my hot seat is, honestly, I've never been a huge Ant-Man fan. But being this is a new number one, and probably a good jumping on point and to get to know the character a little bit more. This is this might be pretty good and obviously the movie is going to be coming out soon. So it's like, why not? Let's check it out. We got 28 pages. This one is $4. And don't forget, we have Al Ewing on this book and Tom Riley. So we'll see what happens with this one. Next goes to the book that is on the rise. And the book that's on the rise for me, and I think it's a very underrated book, this goes to Iron Cat issue two. Now, don't let the name fool you, okay? Don't let Iron Cat say, oh my God, this is so complete and other cheese whiz. We have Catwoman flying around in, in Iron Man cat armor. Not necessarily. This is just basically almost another volume of the Black Cat series that Jed McKay wrote. It's a continuation off of that series. And it has to do with the ramifications of the Black Fox dying. Okay? And actually, it's a really well-told story. And the artwork, it's absolutely gorgeous. If you read the Spider-Woman series, it is so well drawn that you will fall in love with this artwork. The coloring is awesome as well. Definitely a great book, guys. You do, will not be disappointed with this. You probably can pick up issue one still on the racks. So next, we move on to our top 10. And number 10 goes to... I think it's a book I already discussed, so maybe that's why it's not as high on my list. I think it got delayed. This is Radiant Black issue 16. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Piece by piece, Marshall has managed to dismantle the epic front empire. This is what happens next. The last issue was a little bit of a filler as it had to do with Radiant Black, who is Marshall who was filming a movie and at the end of that comic book you got a QR code and you got to see that movie uh, as it was just filmed and really what it was it was an animated short and it really got you an insight of like how they vision the Radiant Black character. I love that. So this book I'm sure is going to be just as good. If you haven't read Radiant Black yet, go out buy that first trade. So this one is 32 pages. It's a $4 book. Next on my list, at number nine, this goes to the Scorched issue eight. And uh, the Scorched is a pretty fun book. If you love all the spawn characters then you're gonna love this book because they all team up together they've been fighting russians they've been fighting plague spawn and it's always full of action and you get to learn all the different motives between all the different spawns on kind of like why they're working together so if you like spawn books this is right up your alley if you like team books this is also right up your alley you can never be disappointed at the price point with this book it's a three dollar comic book and it is 32 pages this is a bigger book this time coming in at number eight i like the first issue of this or the first part of the story arc and this is deathstroke incorporated issue 11 as this explores the year one storyline with Slade Wilson. Now, being that I am not a huge DC person and I haven't read a lot of DC stuff in the past, I find this story intriguing about Slade getting kind of like his first contract and making a decision if he wanted to be a soldier or wanted to work on his own, if he wanted to be a family man or not. And I found that intriguing. So I thought, I thought the first issue of this story arc was quite entertaining. Other people may not. So this is kind of a take it or leave it thing, but this is on my list this time and it's 32 pages and it's $4. Moving on to number seven. This is turning out to be a pretty good book, guys. This is Rogue Sun issue six. So 
We're learning about the main character, Dylan, who is this new character by the name of Rogue Son. He has these, these superpowers where everyone wants this stone, right? And the stone is what gives Dylan, who is the main character, his powers. And you've gotten to meet his family, his friends. You've gotten to meet his mom, his dad, everybody else. And everything is surrounded about this stone. And everyone wants this power. And everyone wants to be this Rogue Son type of character. Things have really heated up in issue five as we learn a little bit more about his mother and who killed the original rogue son, which was Dylan's father. Really interesting story. I love getting to know all the supporting cast here. Give this one a chance, guys. 32 pages. This one is four bucks. Now we move on to number six. And number six is Strange issue four. So... Obviously, Doctor Strange, if you read the Strange, Doctor Strange series in the past, he is no longer around. He is dead. So here, right now, we have Clea acting as the Sorcerer Supreme. Her mission is to try to bring back Stephen Strange. Jed McKay has made no secret that that's Clea's goal in this series, right? And what she comes across along the way has been quite interesting. Her dealing with being the sorcerer Sur sorcerer supreme has been a challenge for her because she is been in the uh what is it the dark realm or whatever it is and things here are a little bit differently right well in this issue now she's gonna have to somehow do battle against dark moon knight which is also known as shadow knight and he was introduced in the moon knight series and jed mckay also writes moon knight so if you love jed mckay's writing and you love the moon knight series now you're getting kind of these two books crossing over just a little bit with each other i think that's pretty awesome i love clea as the sorcerer supreme i love a more darker sorcerer supreme and that's what she is because she's dormammu's niece Great stuff, guys. This is 28 pages, four bucks. So now we move on to the top five. And number five goes to Gambit. This is issue one written by Chris, Chris Clearmont. So if you're a fan of Gambit, you're a fan of Chris Clearmont, I feel like this series has been delayed for quite a while. We're finally getting the all new adventures of the legendary thief known as Gambit. So this could be something that you guys might really enjoy. Um, not exactly sure what the premise is with this book, but again, if you like Gambit, why not give this a try by the legendary X-Men writer himself? We have a lot of these different types of old school writers writing the old school versions of these characters. So this takes place at a simpler time when it comes to the x-men so here we go guys 28 pages another four dollar comic now guys once we get to number one don't go anywhere because i have a new segment on this show called the noteworthy comics even though some books may not appear on my top 10 there's going to be books on here that you may might still want to pick up man i'm having trouble speaking Whew. All right, so now we move on to number four. And number four goes to Something is Killing the Children, issue 25. I guess these days when a book comes to issue 25, it's a little bit of a milestone, right? So Something Killing the Children, issue 25, is, or the series as a whole, has been pretty interesting, I guess, right? Because we got Erica Slaughter. She was framed for murder. She wound up getting out of jail. She's exploring what killed this little girl's uh, grandparents or uncle or whatever it is but my issue when it comes to the series right now it's been very slow burn not much has happened with it and then also we get introduced to this new house the house of cutter who is going to go after erica because erica's no not worthy of being part of the house of slaughter anymore so they put a bounce on her head to kill her so I don't know, man. I, I think the premise and the story is there. It's just drawn out a little bit too much. Not as action or as, I guess, dark, gruesome. I don't know. There's something missing from Something is Killing the Children right now. It's still really good. But for some reason, I liked the original arc better. So we'll see where this goes. 32 pages, 5 bucks. Coming in at number 3 now, we have... Detective Comics issue 1062, Gotham Nocturne, part one of four. 
All I'm gonna say is that we have Rom V on this book. And Rom V is doing a bang up job in Carnage. He did really well in Catwoman, even though I didn't read that, but I heard that from you guys. And maybe not so much in Venom because he's sharing the writing duties there. But we got Tamaki off a of detective. We got Rom V on here. I think he's going to have a story to tell. Let's see what happens in this opening arc. Looking forward to it. I think both Batman books could be absolutely awesome. I love the first Batman that Chip Zdarsky did. So we'll see. 40 pages, $5. Coming in at number two, we have the penultimate issue of Robin issue 16, done by Joshua Williamson. So we have Damien now who is going to be part of the Lazarus Island. That's going to be like his super secret headquarters now. And he's going to be there with Hawk and all his other little friends. And it looks like he's coming across Flatline once again. And her mentor, what is it? Deathhead or I don't even know what to do. Dr. I don't even know. The guy that's on this cover here, the skeleton dude. I, Lord Deathhead, I don't even know. Whatever. In the original story arc when he was at Lazarus Island, Flatline took Damien's heart and then they she brought it back to him and now he washed up on the shore in the last issue and uh, it's some kind of setup, right? So we got two issues to finish this whole thing up. This series has been absolutely stellar. I love this book. I wish it continued on, but I don't know if Joshua Williamson has anything else to say when it comes to a Damien series, right? But he's definitely added more layers to the character. And uh, I had a lot of fun with this series. So whatever happens, happens. 38, 32 pages, $4. But coming in at number one, this goes to The Amazing Spider-Man issue 900. Um, listen, this book is a must if you're a Spider-Man fan. Regardless if you love Spider-Man stories right now or hate them. Uh, when it comes to a milestone, you always got to get them, right? I mean... I think I have 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, and now I have 900. I don't have 200 and I don't have 100. Love to find those. This is a $10 comic book, but it's 92 pages. Now, do I think it needs to be 92 pages because you're going to probably get a lot of like mini stories in there? I, I don't see this being a 92 page one story thing, but we'll see what happens because Spider-Man's doing battle against the Sinister Adaptoid. So that's something new. It's like the Sinister Six all coming together. Who knows? It could be epic. The only good thing that I know is that John Romita Jr. is not doing the artwork in this one. I think it's Ed McGinnis that does the artwork. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll see you guys, keeping my fingers crossed. And after 900, let's hope that we get the story that we're looking for when it comes to the series, right? So we'll see what happened. So now it's time for the noteworthy comics. Now I'm not gonna go into much detail, but these might be books that you might consider picking up because you didn't realize that they're coming out. And the first one goes to DC's Action Comics, issue 1045. A lot of people are enjoying that series right now. So if you're looking for that, pick it up. The next one we have that's no longer on my top 10 right now, but I might still read it. It's Venom issue nine. That series for me has just been lackluster, very boring. Um, I guess this one's got Kang in it. We'll see. The next book is Wolverine Patch Issue 4. For some reason, that first issue did not capture me, so I did not continue reading this book, but it is coming out, and old school Wolverine fans might really appreciate this book. The next one is another Superman book. We have Superman Space Age. This is book one, so that's a new series. Then we have another old school comic book character, Janice Vell, Captain Marvel, issue one. So again, if you're old to that, into that old school stuff uh, that they've been releasing from Marvel these days, this could be right up your alley. Then we have DC Mech, issue one of six. The Justice League gets an upgrade. Didn't we just have the Avengers Mech Strike? This gotta be the same freaking story, but... Nevertheless, we had Jurassic League, and a lot of people are digging that, 
So if you're looking to have some fun, you might want to check this out. Dynamite fans, check out Vampirella Year One, Issue One. This could be something that might dive into more of an origin story for the character. I don't know. I know nothing about Vampirella except that her covers are pretty damn sexy. I can't put them on top 10 comic book covers of the week for the most part because they'll probably hit me for like some kind of over explicit covers, right? So, nevertheless, if you're into Vampirella, check this one out. And then looks like the last one that I have that's noteworthy is the Magic Order 3 issue 1. So the newest Magic Order series out by Mark Millar. If you guys are into that series, check this one out. So there you guys have it. There are my most anticipated comics of the week, plus some. If you guys love comic book covers and want to vote for your favorite one of the week, I'll leave it right here for you to check on. It's always a lot of fun to check out some nice looking covers. And of course, guys, keep buying, keep collecting, but most importantly, please always read your comics. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you real soon. Bye.